Welcome to today's episode of the podcast where we review the most recent installments of a different series every episode. In 2023, Paramount Plus teamed up with the production company behind Sex Education, a show to which you've watched all four seasons, correct? Yep. To create a six-part British thriller comedy series called Stags. Now, Stags was sold as The Hangover meets Prison Break. And having seen Prison Prison Break myself, I know that this is season three because season three is where um, Michael and uh, Lincoln both end up, I think, in some like in a Mexican prison run by criminals because this is about a group of mates uh, groomed set to be. Uh, they go to South Africa to celebrate the stag party, the stag do. And in a typical booze fueled week, they have fun, but then they get arrested and sent to an island prison run by a pair of warring siblings. Uh, well, it also sounds a little bit like Hostel because Hostel also takes place around right. like a bachelor party. Except right? there are like evil, there's like an evil girl in Hostel, right? Who sets them up because then they're. There's right. a lot of evil people in here, though. That hangover section that you were talking about, hangover meets prison break, is almost completely void in this episode. There's not it's a lot not of comedy there. from not what I understand. Comedy. Yeah, in, it's, it's in almost like a full-on five. drama. I never would have guessed that these people, if I didn't read the summary for the series, were part of a bachelor party prior to seeing this. Yeah, so there's supposed to be drugs, escape attempts, guns, doctors. It's a penultimate episode, so I would assume the energy was amped up. But I am disappointed that you weren't able to hop right in here and understand the full premise because one of the shows I was going to relate it to was something that you absolutely could do that with, and that's plebs. Um, plebs, yeah. Yes, because you have a group of friends, flatmates, if you will, but they exist in ancient Greece, and they're there to like get laid and and try to I don't know uh, hang out together and stuff. And so I thought stags would be a lot like that. But then I saw who created it. And it was created by Daniel Cullen, who also created other comedy thrillers like Bad Sisters and Breeders. He's huh. got a very interesting, weird genre clip because you think horror comedy. What shows come to mind? Uh, maybe if you were to go more the comedy route, right. what we do in the shadows. What we do in the shadows. Perfect. Chucky, Ash vs. Evil Dead, uh, the British movie Doghouse from a long time ago, Shining Veil. All of those have an element of more comedy, obviously, but also supernatural. Right. Usually when you hear horror comedy, it has something to do with an uh, ethereal or like something that just isn't right. Well, and that was the funny thing about this because I wasn't sure just from the previously, but it seemed like at the beginning that this could have been like a dystopian. I wasn't sure if we were in the future and this was like a dystopian world that we were living in. Like a Zack Snyder universe? It's very crime ridden, almost like City of God. So that's why I had as one of my comparisons. Does there. it feel realistic uh, or is it kind of like. For the most part, until at the very end, we get like a, a something, a creature out of Legion. It's a Minotaur that's shows up which was completely unexpected because throughout most of the episode at least it didn't seem like we were going that sci-fi with it i didn't think we were so are you sure you saw what you saw and that in the next yes. episode it's not going to get revealed as something else no this is this is for it's not a scooby-doo type scenario where they take the <laughs> nope. minotaur's head off this is an actual minotaur that they have well that so that does make it so that it's supernatural i thought that this was like i was going to say it because it's a thriller comedy as opposed to a horror comedy maybe you could say it's like knives out or buried um but those are uh, maybe, those exist in like sort of a real world yeah 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 so what other comparisons would you relate this to banshee because in the first 15 minutes we have like a crazy amount of violence going on i mean even in the previously we were just seeing bullets flying everywhere we're having kids killing people <laughs> that's what, that's what happens after the previously we're also having people getting sedated about to have these violent surgeries to them i had a low they, uh organ harvesting yes no. yeah because like they want their kidneys, they want their hearts. So there's a character named Gomez, and I'm not sure if we ever see him in the show, or Mr. Gomez, but I think he's supposed to be the big bad who needs to have a surgery, he needs to have a new liver or something, and that's why they have this. So like House of the Scorpion, I think, not not the uh, the rock movie, but like that book from The it. book, yeah. Yeah, uh, whereas, whereas uh, this guy is... He's creating clones of himself mm -hmm. so that he can then use them for organs later on in his life as he ages. 
you're saying that this Gomez guy, he needs different organs and he's able to just use these prisoners as his. I wasn't 100 percent sure why they had this guy named Cisco, because Cisco, I think, agreed to be giving his liver to this guy. But he learns very on early on in this episode that it's going to have to be more than that. Like and so he he's not sure how much Enough he's going to he's have not going to walk out of this surgery. Yeah, okay? he's like, probably he's probably going to be dead by this thing. Does he get anything in return? Is it money? Is it like his family is going to be? Protected. I don't think so. They don't go into that too much. Okay. Um, but also another uh, another comparison I had was Los Azules because uh, a yeah. majority of this episode Wait, the, is the is woman in, in blue. Yeah, it, it, because a majority of this episode I think is like Brazilian. That oh. they're speaking like a different language. Well, so. no, but they're in South Africa. They're, oh well, yeah. So n- not even in the, so your South America, South Africa. <laughs> I mean, the location is actually kind of an interesting topic because they filmed this whole thing in the Canary Islands, specifically Tenerife, which I really haven't heard too much about it. So if I'm mispronouncing it, then forgive me. But it's the lar- largest, most populous island in the Canary Islands, right outside of Spain. Um, and and it's funny because you have this Paramount Plus UK company teaming up with this <laughs> British. Uh, a company that production something 11 i think that did sex education and then they go to spain um the canary islands i have some facts about the island true or false game if you want okay yeah um let's try it from the start as the name implies it was named after the canary birds true or false True. False. It was actually named after uh, dogs or perhaps seals. They're... Okay, but it was still named after animals. Yes, but like not the canary right. that you would think. It's like a, I think in Latin the word for dog is sim- similar to canary. Um, ho- it's home to the oldest dragon tree, Spain's highest mountain, and the world's second biggest carnival. So all three of those. Um, I'm going to say false because the carnival sounds sounds made up. But you're zero for two. It's a, that is true. <laughs> true. All right. Second one. How how do you how do you measure carnivals I, in terms of big know. like square footage or something? I should have looked up the biggest. Where do you think that is? Hmm. Uh, the third one is one of the biggest stunts in cinema history was filmed here. Tom Cruise riding a motorbike off a cliff, flying off the bike, and then parachuting to the ground. So Mission Impossible, Impossible the Seven Part One. Yeah. Uh, Dead Reckoning. Uh oh man. I'm. I'll just say true. I think probably over three. Over three. Yes, yeah. that was in Norway. Um, that makes name? more sense because where he where right. he flies off, there's like a ton of trees, ton of greenery. It was very green. And yes. here it's like a desert. Helsit Koppen Mountain in Strada, Norway. Um. All right, and then the last one, true or false? See if you can get one of these. Fast and Furious Six Solo, Wonder Woman 1984, Jack Ryan the TV show. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy were all filmed in Tenerife. Oh, I want to say true. Or in the Canary. I want to say true, but that just doesn't seem, especially when you're talking about like Fast and Furious 6, there were so many different places I feel like they filmed. I'll just say false. Well, that doesn't mean that they, they were only. But so. it's still, I'm going to say false. And it was true. So <laughs> 0 for 4. I don't think I've ever done that bad in a true for false game up until it's, this point. It's an interesting place to film, though, because they must have some good tax incentives. And I, I guess uh, some of those are sort of dystopian. Um, when you think of Solo, you do think of very uh, deserty landscapes. Uh, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, they definitely had places like that. Fast and Furious 6. Maybe in the backgrounds. Um, yeah, I think that it starts off with like showing where all the characters are, and that's probably one of the places that they shot. Yeah, so it makes sense that like you're showing South Africa, and they're taken here, and you're seeing this prison. Do you get a lot of like views from the outside, or is it no, mostly you don't in- you don't get a lot of shots? In fact, I think that this probably had a pretty low budget because it's it's a majority of this episode is in the titular tunnel. It's but- weird because the. The Guardian, which I'm basing a lot of this review on because I hadn't heard of this show up until last week and there's not a lot of people talking about it. It gave it four stars and it said that it was gorgeous. It says maybe maybe I just got the episode because a lot of it takes place inside, at least for this episode. Right. Uh, And I was sad because I didn't get to see Jojo Macari, who I think they show previous or archival footage of from other episodes. You would really enjoy it. Those about to die. Masters of the air. The regulars. Such sex education. He plays Kai in the show. So maybe he did die already. Yeah, I know. And I think a lot of people have from that poster because the only two people that we follow who are in these weird orange jumpsuits are uh, Stu and Ryan. Those are the main two. Yeah, uh, yeah. Stu, uh, the real life actor, is from Spy Master, and he's thirty three oh, years old. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, and then Ryan was in All the Light We Cannot See. If you 
take all of the things, the projects that these people have worked on. It's a lot of international stuff, which makes sense. Like, uh, I think Ant, there was a guy named Ant, and he wrote for uh, Avenue 5. Like he, he wrote for yeah, Avenue 5? he wasn't even an actor. <laughs> he just wrote for Avenue 5. Someone from Emily in Paris. Was there a guy named Greg? Tell me Greg was in I don't think I met Greg, no. This is unfortunate because Greg played the walrus in Guardians of the Galaxy 3. The who, walrus? Remember when Rocket was stuck in the cage with the animals, kind of like oh, the, weird, the 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 teeth. like wheelchair thing, I, wheelchair yeah, walrus, I, I think. I think yeah. teeth, teeth or something like that is his name. And so yeah, he was he was in there. <laughs> they have a guy uh, who plays Bronco, which Bronco he, is in this episode. Bronco has been in. He's not like famous, famous from any specific series, but he's been in over eighty productions of like different country stuff he's a british villain german mexican swedish u.s turkish arabian dutch french korean and spanish productions my god i wonder if he speaks a little bit of every language <laughs> i think i think yeah i don't think he speaks english in this episode and he he's only given a couple lines but they're not even the people that we follow really in this episode that's more yeah, tell me about story. the story the main episode or the main people that we follow are clem Gemma, and selma and so Clem is supposed to be, I guess, helping out with this surgery, but she's kind of like a double agent almost because she's actually a protagonist in this story. And the people that are going to be working on Cisco, this person that I assume they got either in episode three or episode four for the surgery, uh, he he's starting to freak out because he's learning that they are going to be trying to basically kill him. So uh, but then also we get these weird, I feel like almost Hostel slash City of God uh, kids. You that have show already na- noted those as like the two. So I wonder if it just is constant in your head while you were watching. Well, this, it's, this because, is... it's because it's uh, because when I think about those characters from those things, they're always violent and they learn that uh, Cisco. So they're either really good friends or family members of his uh, learn that he's going to be having this surgery taken. And they uh, go to the place and they start throwing in fire. They go to the crackers. prison, like underneath the prison. Well, it's just like warehouse type of surgery room it's right. kind of deserted but, but they, he's not in a in an orange jumpsuit or anything so cisco is just a is just a dude no i think the only people in the orange jumpsuit that we saw this episode were Stu, ryan and i believe Gemma. i think Gemma had something to do with a bachelor party she was there for for some reason or another okay or maybe just a prisoner that escaped but either way cicero he attempts to escape but is sedated by clem and then Clem, uh, yeah, she knocks him out. Uh, everyone's really happy. And so then Clem is uh, going to be escorted with Miguel to, I guess, this separate house where she's going to slip into uh, her, like, surgical clothing. But the reason, and we're not done with the kids because they leave. And then imagine, like, three little nifties from has Hotel all have knives and they just stab Miguel to death. Like over and over and over again. They're not even gleefully. Gleefully, yeah. They're very happy. I don't even think that they really uh, factor in that Clem is there. Is everyone who dies a bad guy? Uh, from what we've seen so far, yeah. So it's like justice is being done. Maybe by the sixth episode, you'll have a little bit more of the uh, innocent, like people returning home and stuff. Well, yeah, and I think I think it's the this might be the vengeance episode. Well, I think we we don't get that many people that actually die in this episode, but uh, we learned that apparently part of this at least was planned because Clem then goes to Gemma, who's being held up in this prison, I guess, from the people that are going to be working on Cicero that work for Gomez, and uh, and she let. Lets Gemma out and then uh, Gemma kind of backstabs her and throws her into the prison herself and then runs away. So so already it's like we're 10 minutes in and we're getting all this this stuff just kind of thrown at you all that. In the Everything sink. you just said was not in the first 10 minutes, right? Like that was the overall plot. To the no, story. that was just the first 10 minutes of the series. You're going to have to go faster than that because that's insane. <laughs> well, so, OK, Th- then we get Selma. Selma sees that Clem is, is uh, held up. She lets her out of the prison and Selma, I think, is the other uh the other sibling she's from mallorca files that's the, all i know about yeah her. the two warring siblings i think oh, she's one okay. of them yeah yeah, yeah. No. and she she has like her own men that's why i know about it and it, it all ends up being that selma Gemma, and uh and clem they go through this tunnel that's uh, like inside this fridge it reminded me almost of the doom patrol t- tunnel if you remember that episode i think it was like episode 13 of season one where they're just kind of walking through it and that's the majority of the episode so the 
first 15 minutes were pretty exciting, but then when you get to this tunnel storyline, that's when the story, that's when the at least episode screeches to a halt. Like there's no plot development that happens. Is at it all. all character development from there? Like are they yes, are they yeah. just spatting I mean, between you, each other? You learn you learn that like Gemma and Selma had some type of romantic link in the past. And then also even the B story gets a little bit uh more boring because the man, the man I guess is someone who who uh, is kind of keeping Stu and Ryan captive. Right. He wants to uh, rob this cocaine factory, just get a ton of cocaine for no reason. And so there's the drugs. Yes. Yeah. And I, I guess that is just so that he can sell and get more money. And uh, and that plan kind of goes off without a hitch, except for when the person who Bronco shows up at the very end and they have to hide. But it seems like they're probably going to get away because they were able to get all the cocaine, Stu and Ryan. Does this make you want to watch the last episode? Or no, did you because, kind of leave it? Because again, the first 15 minutes were interesting. You're getting people sedated. You're getting violent kids. You're getting people backstabbing one another. But once you get to the tunnel storyline, except for when you learn that there's, again, this minotaur that's going to right. be out of nowhere <laughs> showing up. Talk uh, about a cliffhanger. Yes. That's, yeah, and that's that's really the end of the episode. They they decide that they're going to use Selma for bait because they have to try and get this minotaur that's been stuck underneath this tunnel back in a cage because I guess these people, uh, whenever they ran across their enemies, would throw them in this tunnel. I don't oh, know. So why. it's like the classic minotaur actual like thing where, where yeah, they're stuck in a maze with a minotaur and it goes and kills you. But like, I didn't that really, is, that uh, is the famous. Yes. No, 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 that's true. But I didn't really understand that, why that they... belongs in chaos. That's, yeah, that's well, and that's why I said Legion almost. Okay, because... but it actually belongs in the show Chaos, which which I'm still enjoying. Now. And you see, yeah, so you see the Minotaur kind of come out of the shadows. Uh, Selma is supposed to try and fish it out. She's also alerted her people as to where she is because she's being held hostage by Clem. But then uh, everyone else learns about it as well. So I think you're probably going to get finally the war in the finale between the two siblings. But it just seemed like it was a lot of like set up for something that was pretty disappointing in the end because from from the first 15 minutes i was like this might just be like banshee where that show was i I wasn't a huge fan of it but it had some crazy moments in it where we're here uh yeah when i finally got to the tunnel part of it which i find funny because again that's the title of this episode that's when it became boring i'm going to be giving it like a five out of ten okay so right down the middle i've i have trouble wrapping my head around the idea that this is sold as a stag show it's literally called stags and if you look at the post Poster, it looks like it looks a like a of, comedy. I saw like a poster that you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And so like I was coming in here with stag facts. I I, <laughs> I was like, OK, so stag parties and hen dues. Uh, the reason why they're called stags is because the British people did not want to adopt the French term for bachelor and bachelorette parties that everybody else did, or at least other English speaking nations did. And so they called them stags. Um, and, and there was I had some interesting facts because I wanted to compare it to plebs. Because not only Jojo Macari and his connection with uh, the show uh, Those About to Die, but also it's a British... it's a British series, a comedy. And you would think you would think from the poster that it would be that type of TV series. But again, you only see Stu and Ryan. Well, also the fact that you said that there's a Minotaur, which leads me back to like ancient Greece, ancient Roman mythology and where stag parties originated, they think, was a little bit around that time where in Sparta they would have these pre-wedding parties that started happening. Fun fact, did you know that Spartacus wasn't from Sparta? <laughs> I didn't know that. I actually thought that it was. <laughs> no, he's from like Thames or something like that. But yeah, uh, I had that. And then I had a couple notorious bachelor slash bachelorette facts to go through. <laughs> Has nothing to do with the plot, I, I apparently. Do think, but... I, I, I do want to throw in one final right. pro, which is that the Minotaur, when it showed up, yeah. it did actually look real, especially okay. for the Well, when you say it looked like real, did it look like the Percy Jackson Minotaur? Yeah, when I say that this was something out of the Legion, it, it looked like a but, creature. But like, there was an was actual his. Minotaur that kills his mom in Percy Jackson, remember, at the end yeah, of the first Yeah, that episode. one wasn't as that one was way bigger than this one yeah, was. But usually, again, this is supposed usually to be... they're pretty big. And also, sometimes they're, like, shown with a, a, a head of a bull or whatever, and then, like, the jacked form of... That's what this way It had, like, it's a... It's like, a dude who's it been, like, looked, working out for Well, it wasn't hours. It wasn't a human body. It almost looked like an ape body. But this had the horns that you're talking about and like the bull face. Body? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, almost. That's cool. All right. Um, right. I'll jump to the Bachelor of Facts. <laughs> Did you know that the pet tiger in The Hangover was actually Mike Tyson's tiger? I think I heard that yeah, somewhere. His, yeah, its name was Kenya. I'm not sure if it's still around. And then did you know that it, during John Legend's bachelor party, Chrissy Teigen said uh, no strippers, and then she sent strippers? 
<laughs> <laughs> the last one is sort of sad, but so notorious that I'm just going to say it anyways. Mario Lopez famously cheated on his wife's or his fiance uh, during the bachelor party. And that marriage lasted two weeks in 2004. My God, I yeah. didn't know anything yep. about People that. People have talked about that <laughs> in podcasts and, and others. Um, yeah, so this show, you said you give it a 5 out of 10. 5 out of 10, Guardian yeah. really liked it. It has a 5.8 on IMDb, though. And there's not a lot of reviews out there, only about 100 I didn't people. hear about this at all. Yeah. So, yeah. Usually I start the show by talking about like where we came about uh, hearing about it. The, the fact that Daniel Cullen is the creator, again, breeders, bad sisters, now s- stags, he does have a p- peculiar like niche. The that weird he's, thing, so yeah, Bad Sisters, I see coming where the, out with another season pretty soon. Bad, too. Yeah, I know season two. Uh, but it, I see where the comedy comes in for that. But if I remember Breeders, at least when we were doing the season two finale, the research for that, I think the episode that you watched was also like a Very full dark. on drama. Yeah, yeah uh, Martin, what's his Martin face? Freeman? Mar- Martin Freeman. Yeah, he uh, he was playing like an angry father who then I think he, either he gets hit by his kid or he hits his kid, and by the end of the episode, they're both apologizing or something. It, that was a long time ago. I know that that series ended. Yeah. So 5.8 on IMDb, not a lot of reviews out there, not a Metacritic rating. Um, if you were to recommend it to anyone, I remember the last thing I... I almost, I almost feel like this episode was probably not like the other four. But then again, yeah, I don't really I mean, know. Because one of the reviews... Uh, of high speed monta- a high speed montage of every Bachelor Party movie ever made. It doesn't sound like, <laughs> no, not doesn't like, sound like what you just all. talked about. I mean, there there is like, I mean, obviously with the Bachelor movies, they, they go crazy enough with them, but there's so many characters that aren't in this series. It feels like they die, and that is definitely not like the hangover. Or would they or return anything. in the next episode? So I maybe. would check out the first 10 minutes and see if maybe that happens. Um, the next one we're planning on doing is animated Universal Basic, or the animated series Universal Basic, guys. I don't know much about that one either. What do you Fred Armisen. Fred Armisen stars in it. Thanks for listening. We'll see you in the next episode. Hope you enjoyed this one. Bye. Bye. Bye.